Now you all know me for reviewing some interesting graphics cards of yesteryear, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. It's about time I have a look at a truly woeful, I mean wonderful piece of graphics hardware, so of course I had to get a 15 year old Intel GMA iGPU. The Beast has an amazing 80 shading units and is clocked at a blistering 533 MHz, truly putting today's iGPUs to shame. VRAM is dynamically allocated from the system memory by Windows, and as such memory speed is dependent on the system memory as well. Along with this we have sketchy DX10 support, so this thing is perfectly equipped to run all of today's games very well. It consumes some amount of power, but I don't really care enough to find out how much. Now that we've covered the specs, let's dive into this thing's interesting history. The Intel GMA X4500 is an iGPU made by Intel in 2008. With history out of the way, let's now take a look at today's test system. I used a Dell Optiplex 780 desktop for today's testing, and it has a Core 2 Duo E7500 which is B-cell overclocked to 3.6GHz, as well as 4GB of DDR3. For today's testing I used some kind of driver and the rest of the specs will be on screen. That being said, let's roll the benchmarks. First game up is Blood and Bacon, and I used a 1080p resolution along with the default settings and 8xAA. We averaged 33 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 15. Now these numbers sound quite bad, but remember, the human eye can only see 10 FPS, so if anything this game is running way too fast. Never seen an instance where an experience was spoiled by the game running too well. We're off to a great start with this monster GPU. Next up is the underrated masterpiece, Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. Using some kind of resolution at some kind of settings I wasn't bothered to check, we averaged 85 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 57. With these lightning fast frame rates, the game was a great experience backing into hills at over 500 miles per hour. I mean, you know what they say, over the road is right, it's my way or the highway, and the highway ain't got shit. Next up is a really demanding game, hell it might as well have been the crisis of its era, and that's Mountain Blade Warband. Using 720p with the low settings in DirectX 7 mode, we averaged 56 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 29. It looked like a Nintendo 64 game, I mean it looked great considering the hardware we're running, and remember from before, the human eye can only see 10 giga rays per second. Overall it was an excellent showing from this capable GPU. Half-Life 2 is the next game I tested, and here I used 720p along with the low settings and textures set to medium. We averaged 44 frames per second, with 1% lows down to 30. While it was very playable, the game didn't look very great, and in addition frame times were all over the place, with a lot of harsh swings felt during the capture. It's fine for an iGPU from 2008 I guess, but still pales in comparison to even entry level GPUs from the mid 2000s. But I mean, who cares about that? It gives that low-end PC from 15 years ago kind of vibe to this game, which really revives that childhood nostalgia. Might as well be the ideal way to experience it. Tomb Raider was a great experience- oh wait, hang on, this can't be right. Ah, left a GTX 750 in there. Those things just get everywhere, don't they? Anyway, we used 800 by 600 as well as the low preset, and the average amount of slides rendered on a per second basis was 11, while the lowest 1% of these slides was 7. It was a great PowerPoint presentation, and while it might be a bit jittery, it's a slower paced game anyway, so I'd call this the perfect result. Overall, this iGPU really surprised me. As shown in the benchmarks, it is without a doubt capable of handling AAA titles, and is really quite an underrated piece of kit if you're looking to do some serious gaming. Anyhow, that'll be the end of this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next actual video.